Vsauce, Kevin's here, playing one of the deadliest games ever created. So deadly, in fact, that I needed Balloon Kevin to act as a proxy for me. Real Kevin. I'm Real Kevin. The game is Russian Roulette. You probably already know how Russian Roulette is played. Traditionally, a single round is put in a revolver that holds six cartridges. The cylinder is spun so that it's impossible to know which chamber will be fired. You pull the trigger and... There's a five out of six chance that you are safe, and a one out of six chance that it goes really badly for you. I've inserted a single needle into each dart so that in our version of this game, it's gonna go very badly for poor Balloon Kevin. And that's dangerous and unsafe. This whole thing is dangerous and unsafe and against the terms of service for every site on the internet. Thankfully, Russian Roulette is mostly used in movies as a dramatic device and I'm using it as a dramatic way to analyze probability. The important part is that you never do any of this ever, okay? Okay. I want to figure out the best way to survive this notoriously fatal game. So if Balloon Kevin plays a standard game of Russian Roulette, he has one in six odds of permanently deflating his dome. There's about an 83% chance that my rubbery little clone wins, and a 17% chance he loses. Forever. And that's that, so here we go. It's time to test your luck, Balloon Kevin. Wait. Let's make this scenario a little more complex. Let's say that there are two balloon bursting missiles inside. Six chambers with two possible spherical air sac splattering darts that have been placed next to each other. Adjacent. There's a two out of three chance that my air-headed doppelganger survives on a random pull of the toy. So, do you like your chances, boy? You think that Sharpie mustache is better than the real deal? Well, let's see if fate is on your side. The two out of three survival chance comes through, so it's on to the next round. My gaseous twin has had a bit too easy of a chance up until now. The survival math has been very, very straightforward. He's had no active role in deciding his own fate, so let's give him something to think about. For round two, I'm gonna give him a choice and place the life odds in his pipe cleaner hands. The choice is this. Now that he's managed to survive one round of the game, does he want to spin the cylinder before playing again? Or does he just play and hope for the best? The big question is, is it better for him to randomize the cylinder or continue playing with its current configuration? Well, answer the question, punk. What's it gonna be, you blue beanie wearing balloon buffoon? Given that there are two adjacent cartridges in there and the toy has been fired once already, does it even matter mathematically whether Air Kevin spins or not? Let's find out. The first option, spinning. It's the same scenario with the same math. You're basically recreating round one's odds, which we know give you a two out of three chance of survival. So not really a whole lot to consider there. But if you don't spin, you know something else. The toy has just been fired on one of the empty chambers, which is how Balloon Kevin survived to get to round two. And a little logic reveals the math of whether to spin or not spin. Think about the positioning. There are four possible empty chambers and only one of them is directly before the two cartridges, which means there's a 75% chance that round two's trigger pull is on another empty chamber. 
and just a 25% chance that this balloon is about to go baboom. By not spinning, Balloon Kevin has earned himself about eight more percentage points of survivability. And it's such a straightforward probability calculation because we know that the darts are adjacent. If they were just randomly placed in the chamber, then things change. Here's how. There are 15 possible positions for two darts randomly arranged in six chambers. Six of them are adjacent. So darts would be in one and two, two and three, three and four, four and five, five and six, all the way to six and one. There are six more ways that there can be a single space between the darts. So one and three, two and six, one and five, four and six, three and five, two and four. Finally, there are just three ways that darts can be opposite one another. One and four, three and six, and two and five. If Baluvin survives the first round and he doesn't know whether the darts are next to each other or spread out, does he want his second shot with a spin or with no spin? We know that we have a 75% chance on surviving those six adjacent positions. For the cylinders that have darts one space apart, two of the four empty positions come before an empty and two of the four come before a dart. So that's 50%. And it's the same for the opposite darts. Our overall safety probability here is a calculation of those weighted probabilities. And it goes a little something like this. Six over 15 times three over four plus six over 15 times two over four plus three over 15 times two over four. Three over 10 plus one over five plus one over 10 equals three over five. By not spinning here, we have a 60% chance of survival compared to 66.67% two over three when we do spin. When we know the darts are adjacent, we can gain 8% survivability. When we know they're random, we can avoid losing about 7%. It's not some magic solution that allows Balloon Kevin to survive what's probably humanity's most deadly game. Doing the math doesn't unveil a secret way to win 80% of the time. It just doesn't work that way. It could get you 8% and 8%'s pretty insignificant, isn't it? No, it's not. Consider this. 0.1% of DNA is responsible for all the differences you see amongst humans and only 1.3% separate us from chimps. 1984 was the last US presidential election with more than an 8% popular vote gap. Improving road safety by 8% would save 96,000 lives per year. A $1,000 investment growing at 8% compounded annually doubles in just nine years. And ultimately, if you're an incredibly attractive balloon with nice big googly eyes, a perfectly formed cotton ball nose, and surprisingly muscular pipe cleaner arms that finds itself locked in a life or death game of chance, you'll take any advantage you can get to avoid being popped. And as always, thanks for watching.